Hey, thanks for joining us. Today I'll be walking you through the Huntress Breach Detection and Response Service, and I'll be giving you a brief introduction to our company and kind of share why our approach is so different than anything else on the market right now, and specifically demonstrate on how Huntress makes hackers earn their access into your network. I'm Kyle Hansloven, co-founder and CEO here at Huntress Labs, and my team actually spent a decade doing offensive cybersecurity at NSA as cyber warfare operators and developers. And I actually won the Top Performer Award from General Alexander during my tenure there. With that said, my team and I actually won the World Series of Hacking 2 at DEF CON's Capture the Flag. And the one thing that we do really great is offense and defense and cybersecurity. With that said, we took these skills and invented a new layer of security. It's specifically called Managed Detection and Response. And if you take a look, some of the analysts in the industry specifically call out that this is a very different approach. It's not just another antivirus or another firewall or a SIM. It's specifically a service designed to complement your preventative security investments and catch like the gaps and the advanced threats that happen to slip by. So we took our offensive security experience and actually support defense by hunting for the hackers in your network. I always like to kind of show what that looks like and give an example of my time at NSA and how I would have done it myself. And specifically, you think about a breach, you probably think about, oh, I hear these happen so quickly. You know, hackers get in in seconds to minutes, and that's where they actually create that persistent access, right? So they establish a foothold, and then they're going to move through this network, kind of trying to figure out where's the prize data that they're looking for. You know, never do you get inside an actual network and find all your data wrapped in a bow for you there. Sometimes you have to social engineer. Maybe a hacker has to get your email access. And with that email access, they'll maybe even spearfish some of your other, you know, uh, employees trying to figure out, hey, can I get somebody with elevated privileges? Maybe one of the system administrators. Unfortunately, all too often, we only hear about this at the discovery phase, and then we have to contain it. But I want to actually illustrate what it's like for someone like me trying to get in the network, and you've probably never thought about it this way. So when I'm getting into your network, I specifically do research in advance, trying to figure out what type of antivirus or next-gen antivirus might you be running. That way I know how to bypass it, get past whatever security in place, and make sure that when I infect your computer, I'm not getting caught. And that's kind of reality here in 2019. With that said, I already gave the example, I'm going to have to move through your network, dwell in your network until I can find that. And that might take me days or even weeks. And when I do that, I actually find the data. Well, now I'm going to have to figure out what type of prevention do you have in place for catching me on the network layer? Right? I'm going to have to bypass whatever active network monitoring you're using, whether that's something like a firewall, or maybe you're using like a DNS filter or traffic monitor. Maybe you're even looking at SSL traffic. With that said, I tend to abuse all kinds of trusted applications or, you know, if you're exfiltrating data uh, to Dropbox to save it to the cloud, I might want to exfiltrate my data over Dropbox as well. But instead of being to your legitimate Dropbox, it's going to be to my nefarious Dropbox. And unfortunately, we find this all too late, right? It typically is the customer or maybe law enforcement that calls us and says, hey, I discovered your data was actually out there on the dark web, or maybe my computer's running slow. And as a result, as IT departments and MSPs, we get stuck with the expensive response costs. The reason for this is pretty simple. Security products typically get evaded because folks like me spend the time and effort to evade them. And the way that I do it, as I previously mentioned, I abuse the legitimate products that you're already using. This could be like third-party applications, like I mentioned, like OneDrive or Dropbox. Or maybe I actually use the operating system's features against you. And these fancy new attacks, they tend to go by the word fileless malware attacks. There's also other ways that folks like me actually get in and wreak havoc in your network. And that's through when like you find an incident, maybe your preventative security products only partially clean the incident. And so when someone like me gets back in there, I just collect the data I already took last time and make my way out your front door, maybe even the back door, depending on what type of security you have in place. And last but not least, the way that I continue to get in and stay in is specifically that click happy end user. And we have a joke here at Huntress. We call this the layer eight of the OSI model, you know, the, the layer that's always going to fall down. 
With that said, I, I love to be able to visualize what this looks like. So think about me, Kyle. I'm starting my day as an attacker, and I have to get in your network. Nobody ever thinks about the economics behind an attack like this. So for instance, I'll give you an example, like maybe I you know, fished you with a, some type of malicious Word document, right? It had macros you had to enable, and I sent you a great email, something like, here's my resume for the job advertisement I found you advertising out on Indeed. And what I did with that is I put something malicious in there and got you to open it. Or maybe I convinced you to go uh, to my malicious website and I exploited your third party application like Flash. Or maybe I really had to use something sophisticated and when you browse to my malicious website, I got you to run you know, a Chrome applet or maybe I actually exploited with a zero day your Chrome browser. Regardless of how I got into your network, nobody ever thinks about what a hacker does next. And what someone like me would do is I actually specialized in long-term persistent access. So if you take a look at this little flashing red dot here, this represents the foothold I would have made inside your network. And specifically the reason that I do that and maintain a foothold on this computer is I don't want to have to start my very next day out back at scratch. Could you imagine every single day having to resend a phishing email and then the next day send a phishing email and just hope that you fall for it? Or maybe if I'm using like that Chrome exploit and have to hope that Chrome doesn't actually patch my vulnerability or you patch it. So some hacker like me, after I get past your prevention layers, the first thing I do is actually install that foothold. Now this might be a new thing to you. So maybe you're wondering, well, Kyle, tell me a little bit more about hacker footholds. How do they work? What, what, why, do you, why do you do this? And so the best way I know how to do this is once again explain what I would have done. So some hackers make a foothold that actually runs at boot up. This is the type of way that maybe I got into your terminal services server and I want to collect data on every single computer that's automatically or every user that's automatically logging into this computer or server. So I make my malware run at boot up. And that makes sense, you know, as soon as you log in, I can start scraping your credentials out of your Google Chrome browser, or maybe I start stealing your files. If you have other preventative security layers, like some of the next generation antivirus that's out there, maybe your actually malware is, you know, has to be a little bit more sophisticated. So me as a hacker, I decide, well, if I'm going to risk getting caught, maybe I only run when one particular targeted user logs in. And that's a way that I can improve my operational security as a hacker. And the extreme case of this is maybe I actually only run my malware when the process executes. So think about something like maybe only when that accountant logs into something like QuickBooks, do I want to start keystroke logging to get that uh, QuickBooks password? Or even better, when that actual user and I have all the files ready to exfiltrate, only when that data is being synced to Box or Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive, wherever you store your data in the cloud, only then when I see that Dropbox application start running, do I start exfiltrating my data. Could you think about being a preventative security product like antivirus or anti-malware and trying to get that right? You know, if you get it wrong one time and stop my Dropbox application from running, you're really hindering productivity. So as a result, hackers tend to create these footholds, both not only to maintain long-term access, but to help them evade and slip by their security products that you're using. So you're probably wondering how the heck does Huntress work? And the best way for me to explain this here is to show you. You install your Huntress agent with your RMM. That could be Automate, that could be something like Kaseya, Maybe it's something like Continuum. Whatever you're using to deploy your software, Huntress is going to run. That could be Enable, whatever from SolarWinds as well. And you're going to push that to all your laptops, servers, and workstations. And that way we could protect you whether you're on-prem or off-prem. As soon as the Huntress agent is deployed, we're going to start sending all that data to the cloud. And that allows us to be able to do very lightweight monitoring on the endpoint, constantly monitoring without ever inhibiting your end users. So that agent is only eaten up like 1% CPU, less than 20 megs of RAM, and it only sends data to the cloud when it has to. With that said, in the cloud is where we do all the heavy lifting. So think about this is where our fancy algorithms and machine learning runs to be able to figure out, all right, which one of these footholds is not supposed to be here? What is a legit application versus what's a malicious application? This is also where we use a one-two approach that not only do we have like a, our fancy algorithms, but we also have humans in the loop. And we call those our threat operations team. 
And ThreadOps analysts, they specifically are folks that have experience in forensics, reverse engineering, and penetration testing. And they're there to complement the gaps that when, you know, your fancy AI algorithms fall short, they're there to complement that gap. So what happens is when they or the algorithms figure out something's malicious, they're going to create you a ticket straight in your service board that's going to be able to tell you, hey, here's the incident and here's what you need to do next. And that PSA could be anything like Synchro. It could be something like ConnectWise, could be BMS. Bottom line, wherever you get your tickets, even if that's something like a SIM, that's where we want to deliver your incident reports to. An example of the ticket that we create here for you is actually going to look just like this. We're going to give you a summary of, hey, how serious is this issue? And specifically, we're going to take away all questions needed. For instance, this was a banking Trojan, specifically called Emotet here. And if you take a look at Emotet, it's high risk, and we re recommended that you wipe this host. If you think about that, that gives your, yourself a non-technical risk-based overview. And specifically here, if you look below, we call out what products that we complemented. You know, this isn't to, you know, kick dirt on any of these vendors. All these vendors are working their butt off to prevent. But I can tell you firsthand, perfect prevention isn't possible. If it was, my co-founders and I wouldn't have been so successful at NSA. And with that said, we then deliver, even if we tell you to wipe the host, we always give you a step-by-step -step remediation guidance that's going to give you exactly what you need to do to be able to remediate this, whether it's deleting something from the registry, blowing away a file or some directories, or even running some commands. Now, you're probably wondering to yourself, oh, that's great, but what do my customers get to see? Huntress is a fully managed detection and response service, and our whole goal is to be able to make you look good, whether you're an IT department or an MSP. And so we're going to give you each month a QBR or a, a monthly business review that allow you to be able to say, hey, you know what? What happened this month and how were we able to find an incident? And if you take a look at this example here, right, you're able to brand it with your own logo in the upper right hand corner. And then each one of your clients or each one of your customers are going to be able to get their own report each month and each quarter. And if you take a look, this whole report was written in a way, it's kind of like uh, a way to show value. So when you and I both have the case where a customer calls up and says, you know what, my network is running great, my computers are running great, why do I need my MSP or why do I need my IT department? Well, you and I both know that you work your butt off all month to be able to keep things going good, but you got to be able to show that value or they don't appreciate it. This whole report was written that way. So, you know, if you have 100 incidents in a month, a customer knows the value you're providing when you're discovering an incident. But what happens when you have none? If you take a look here at this report, this whole report was written in a way that says, hey, you know what? We had to monitor almost 9,000 changes this month. And we had to actually put human eyes and reviewed 918 of these new ones. Specifically, four of them needed an actual analyst to go in and do some analysis, whether that's reverse engineering, actually digging in to figure out maybe deobfuscation if something was obfuscated like by a hacker. And they're gonna confirm, maybe this was legitimate software, or maybe this was something shady, but regardless, they're going to be able to say all this effort is what led you into an incident free month, which is huge being able to show that type of value. With that said, the reason that our partners love us so much is we're specifically designed to protect your profits. So whether you're discovering an incident early on and want to quickly clean it up with a junior IT analyst, or maybe you actually have something like a project based work that you're you, you know, this is an, a way to be able to actually generate new revenue. Huntress is there for you. More specifically, we're going to help you be able to retain your clients. So this proactive response, you know, a lot of people think, oh, hey, prevention. If it's not prevention, it must be reactive. But that's a completely different way of looking at this with Huntress, right? We're proactively hunting down these hackers. So when you do have an incident, you can actually come to your clients and say, we discovered this incident and took care of it before it escalated into a breach, which obviously helps protect your reputation and it definitely protects your client. We're going to fully integrate into any product you use, whether that's an RMM, PSA. We want to be seamless into your workflow. And Huntress is one of the only products in the market that actually does this from a security point of view. And even better, you don't have to hire security rock stars to be able to run this service. We're specifically designed to allow your junior technician and our Huntress ThreadOps team is going to be doing all the analysis on the back end. You guys just get a specific step-by-step -step remediation recommendation into your service board every month. If you're curious about how Huntress works, I highly encourage you guys to make us put our money where our mouth is. 
I, as a technical founder of Huntress, designed the product, so it's the easiest product you'll actually deploy. We're talking about it's seamless, it's lightweight, no pop-ups for your end users, no reboots. They're not even going to know it's on their computer. And our whole goal is we're going to let you deploy this to an unlimited number of computers. That way we could show you your first three higher critical incidents, and you've got 21 days to be able to kick the tires on this. Like, I don't like to be told how something works. I like to be shown how something works. So you guys can actually head straight over to the website here and be able to actually kick the tires, no risk. And at the end of the trial, say for instance, you're like, ah, oh, this was great, but I need to uninstall it or maybe only uninstall it on some clients. Straight from our dashboard, you could click one button. The agent silently uninstalls. No reboots, no pop-ups, no inconvenience for your end user. Really, the trial process and uninstallation process is just as easy as the installation. So head on over to the website if you're interested.